In order to do calculations of acids and bases, we need to dissect the role of water. And I want to get into auto-ionization of water. But before that, if we talk about a molecule such as HCl, gaseous, you cannot call it hydrochloric acid. This is hydrogen chloride, a covalent molecule. As soon as it touches moisture, then it becomes acidic. And it turns into hydrochloric acid, aqueous which in turn dissociates 100% because it's just simply strong acid. To give you hydrogen ions, aqueous, and chloride ion, aqueous. And hydrogen ions are the main uh, species that affect your pH. Now let's just talk about water. When you have a glass of water or two molecules of water, they react with each other in this fashion. They establish an equilibrium and they will release a minute amount of hydronium ion, H3O+, and the same amount of hydroxide, OH minus aqueous. Many times we write this equation as just simply one molecule of liquid water dissociating partially to give you hydrogen ions, aqueous, and hydroxide. So the first order of business is to realize hydrogen and hydronium are exactly identical in light of acids and bases. Next is, let's just write uh, equilibrium constant for auto-ionization of water. So I write K equilibrium in terms of concentrations K subscript C. Since it's specific for water, we can give it K subscript W. And it's as usual products over reactant hydrogen ions times hydroxide ions divided by H2O but now you should realize H2O is pure liquid we ignore it because it's already part of KW instead of that we put 1 do not put 0 in denominator so KW equilibrium constant of water it's simply hydrogen ions their concentration times hydroxide ions their concentration and it happens to be set number of 1 times 10 to minus 14 which is easy to remember because your magnitude of pH 0 to 14 comes to life because of that at a specific temperature which is room temperature 25 degrees Celsius you change your temperature KW also changes which I get into it in few minutes so this is the first relationship hydrogens times hydroxides are fixed number and you can use it in many of your calculations now let's see uh, what is a pH? Now P in P is simply a scale. P is a log scale, log base 10 scale. So it's a mathematical scale. We use that in order to make a tiny number into a meaningful number or, or a very large number into then again a meaningful number. Now we also put negative for P so that it's a negative log scale because your concentrations are always uh, lesser than one so it's magnitude of 0 0.001 and we want it to become a positive number so pH is simply negative log of concentration of hydrogen since it's log 10 you could also say concentration of hydrogens is nothing but inverse log or 10 to power of negative pH. The complementary scale is pOH which is negative log of hydroxide and you can also say if you're looking for a concentration of hydroxide is 10 raised to exponent negative pOH. Now on this graph if I want to show you the relationship between pH and concentration of hydrogen or hydronium as H increases, pH decreases, and it's something of an exponential nature of this fashion. So when hydrogen concentration is, is high, pH is rather low, and you will have acidic sort of uh, solution. So in terms of acidic solutions, we can say H concentration is bigger than hydroxide concentration in this equation when you plug it in and that says pH is also less than 7 for, for it to be acidic. For a neutral solution there 
exactly equal to each other and if you take square root of this number you will find h which is equal to oh and it's 1 times 10 to minus 7 and this will say ph is also 7 now if you are a base or basic solution then hydrogen ion concentrations are smaller than hydroxide ions and this indicates that pH is bigger than 8. Now in the next slide I want to talk about uh, Kw and its variation with temperature. Calculate pH of water at 40 degrees Celsius when Kw is given to you. Now remember from the slide before at 25 degrees Celsius our standard condition Kw was 1 times 10 to minus 14. This number is definitely bigger than this at higher temperature. If we look at equilibrium of H2O one more time, that dissociates partially to give you hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, the question is, is this endothermic or exothermic? Kw we decided is simply hydrogen times hydroxide, their concentrations. Now, as temperature goes up, Kw goes up, which is the product. So this will say you are endothermic. So the heat is on the reactant side, and it's actually 57 kilojoules exactly, or kilojoule per mole of water that you dissociate. So this indicates you are endothermic, meaning if I write Kw versus temperature, as temperature increases, Kw also increases in this fashion. So pH scale also changes with temperature and that's one thing to pay attention to. Uh, now let's just go after the calculation. So what is pH? So it, therefore I need to know my concentration of hydrogens. And I remember hydrogens times hydroxides are equal to Kw which in this case is 2.92 given in this problem times 10 to minus 14 at 40 degrees Celsius. Now OH and H are exactly the same, so it's like x squared. So if you're looking for one of them, take the square root of the number, which is 2.92 times 10 to minus 14, and when we do that, we will find it's 1.71 times 10 to minus 7. Now pH is negative log of this number, 1.71 times 10 to minus 7, and when you do that, it becomes 6.77. So what it's saying is your scale of 0 to 14 rather has changed for something else. It goes now from 0 to 13.54, and the middle is exactly 6.77. This is your neutral water, neutral water at 40 degrees. Celsius. So pH is function of temperature. If nothing, let's just remember that. Kw is definitely function of temperature. It's an endothermic process. It goes forward in this fashion. Now the last thing I want to talk about Kw is uh, to just compare it to neutralization reaction. If I take an acid such as hydrochloric acid, a base such as sodium hydroxide or any other base of group 1, or any other acid, they give me salt, in this case is NaCl and water, H2O liquid. Now this is molecular equation. If I write it in terms of ionic equation, all aqueous uh, substances, I'm going to break them into fragments of ions, sodium ion, hydroxide ions, on the other side, on the product side, I can do the same thing to my salt, sodium, ion plus chloride ion. You cannot break pure liquids and pure solids, so we leave H2O as is. We get rid, rid of like terms on both sides, known as spectator ions. Chloride with chloride, sodium with chloride. The leftover is net ionic. So all you have is H aqueous plus OH aqueous giving you H2O. Now if you remember from back in days last year, energetics, neutralization is exothermic reaction. 
and it's not important what acid what base you have you always release 57 kilojoules per mole of water that you form plus 57 kilojoule per mole so it was no surprise in slide before I said if you take H2O liquid and if you dissociate it into H plus and OH minus auto ionization of water you require 57 kilojoule per mole so something to remember neutralization is to produce one mole of water 57 kilojoules for that auto ionization is to break one mole of water to fragments of hydrogen and hydroxide 57 kilojoule per mole for that endothermic process